Good afternoon, Paul. I, I want to give a testimony before I will give the devotion. <laughs> a short testimony, Paul, and I, on, I, I understand that I, I only have five minutes to have this devotion. Seven minutes, or five to seven minutes. Uh, I, just want to, I just want to thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity right now na makapag bigay po ng devotion sa inyo and I you know if I will go back uh, uh, hindi, hindi ko po babalikan yung mga buhay ko dati but I really thank the Lord for giving me the the gift of life sa salvation ko and I also uh, keep praying na sana maging maging uh, isa ito sa mga magiging, magiging paraan para madala ko rin yung aking family sa Panginoon, and I'm looking forward sa, sa, sa future or sa near future na makapagbigay din ako ng, ng kahit, kahit yung pagsishare lang sa kanila because my, I, I believe that our, our burdens in life is our, like one of them is our family as well. So my parents, my father, especially my mom and dad, then to my, my brothers and uh, if some of you knew me, uh, my my brothers, uh, we are not living together as one in our in our province. So we are uh, at the early age we separated with each other because of one of the reason is we we don't have enough. Siguro yung parents ko hindi hindi ko naman pwedeng hindi ko sabihin na hindi ko pwedeng sabihin na hindi nila ginawa yung responsibility nila sa akin buhay or sa aming buhay. But this what this is one purpose siguro kung bakit kami hiniwala is to really seek God sa buhay namin and to stand and to find what is the real meaning of life and uh, um kaya hiwa-hiwalay po kami yung isa kong kapatid nasa nasa Bahrain po siya ngayon and then my two brothers are in Manila and then one of my brother is in Iloilo, and one of my, and my only one sister is in in my province, which is uh, Capiz. And my parents are living; uh, they are just living together. And dalawa na lang sila na iwan sa bahay. So I feel like parang ang laki or ang pakiramdam ko ay parang gusto kong umuwi pero it is not the answer I believe that it's not the answer yet and it's not the right time for me to be home because I I, I my heart or my, my desire is to really know more and the first thing na, na marinig ko na makapagbigay ng devotion sa inyo, I feel like I was nervous and honestly my, my knees are trembling right now and <laughs> and uh, I, I, I will do this for sure and for God's glory and I will keep on um, I, I believe that every one of us here wants to serve the Lord and we really want to know more and I am happy to have this church na nagbibigay or nag-aaral talaga tayo ng salita ng Diyos and um, one more I thank the Lord for the outreach na pinagkatiwala niya sa amin, sa amin nila Jong, nila Milka, nila, nila Ati Kay. And to it, we, we thank the Lord for this, um, you know, work na pinagkatiwala niya sa amin. Without Him, I, I believe na hindi rin mangyayari ang ganitong klaseng bagay. So, um, So yun po, and I thank the Lord for everything He had done for my life. Okay, so let us stand up please and let us all read uh, 2 Samuel 11. Let us read verses 1 and 2. I will be focusing on these two verses. Verses 1 and 2, 2 Samuel verses 1 and 2. Let us all read together. Ready? Begin. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening tide, David arose from off his bed, and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. 
Let us come to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity right now. Thank you, Lord, for the time na ibibigay niyo po sa amin sa mga tao po na dinala niyo po rito. Salamat po sa presensya po ng bawat isa. Bigyan niyo po kami ng tamang puso at isipan sa aming pag-aaral po na inyong salita. Bigyan niyo po ako ng wisdom sa aking pagbibigay po ng devotion sa kanila na way maging biyaya po sa amin at uh, maging biyaya po ito sa amin, Panginoon. Bigyan niyo po ako ng wisdom at kalakasan sa aking pag Bibigay po ng devotion. Ipo namin ito sa Panginoon Jesus. Amen. So, um, I was reading the story of David and I believe that some of you here knew that I was a, I, I, I am very, hindi ko man masabi na fan or hindi ako, parang, inaral, uh, ginusto ko ang buhay ni David. It's like, napaka, na, na, nagbigay ko na interest sa buhay ni David because, The, I believe one of the young people before one one of the young people before was asking me like, who is your favorite Bible character? And I said Goliath. And I started to learn. I started to to read the Bible and try to listen to different preachings. And um, that came to the point na pag-aralan ko ito. And I and we all know that David is very famous and. Um, And because of those, uh, the story that David about David and Goliath. Nga. So, so we all we have the famous story of David and Bathsheba, and uh, we saw the downfall or the very sad story of David. So, if you're gonna read the the book of Second uh, Samuel, it tells there that David had gone through so many trials or tribulations in his life. So, back in the book of First Samuel, he was being hunted by Saul. And in 2 Samuel, he became a king and established an established king. So as you can see, the, the last chapters, or the last two chapters, it is very, very positive. So in chapter 7, verse 1, it says there, And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. And in 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1, And after this it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. So it is victory after victory that God given him rest and winning all the battles in his life. So in chapter 9 and also in chapter 10, he showed kindness to his allies and basically wins all these battles in his life so just victory after victory god is blessing david or god is blessing david he's doing the right thing he's showing the kindness of the lord but we can see here the downfall in chapter 11 all right let's let me start from second samuel chapter 1 uh, chapter 11 verse 1 and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that david sent joab and his servant with him and all israel and they destroyed the children of ammon and besieged rabbah but david tarried still at jerusalem take note for the praise and it came um sorry when at the time when kings go forth to battle and david tarried still at Jerusalem. In verse 2, And it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. So I want to focus more on these two verses here. And obviously the Bible, are, there is nothing in the Bible that is incidence or coincidence. I believe that God brings it out for a reason or for a purpose. All right, so I said you take note, the praise at the time when kings go forth to battle, but David tarried at Jerusalem. So the question is, why Israel wants a king? Because he or they want the king to fight for them, to protect them. And that's one of the, what I believe that these are the work or the job of a king, to protect your own soldier and to protect your countrymen. So King David's supposed to be in the battle. As it says in verse 1, that all the kings go forth to battle and do their responsibilities in protecting their own soldiers and each country or their country. He is supposed to be in the battle. And that's what the role or the job of a king. So same to us as Christians, we are supposed to be in the battle for the Lord. So we fight for what is right and we stand 
for the truth. We are supposed in the battle, or we are supposed to be in the church every Sunday. Going to church is also a battle. Right? Every morning, imagine you will wake up early in the morning to have the Bible study, and then you cook for food for lunch. I mean, this is a battle. And we don't want this naturally, or natural human being. We don't want this because we want good. We want to feel good. We want our lives to be easy, and that's all. We don't want hardship, all right? So going to church is also a battle. Not going to somewhere, not a laundry day, not a rest day, not a sleeping day, not our day, but it's the Lord's day. So we, we should put this in mind that every Christian must be a church. And uh, that's all. <laughs> Another thing here is be where God wanted you to be. His will is to see us being in the right place, doing things and spending time for His glory alone. So let us put our attention to where God wants us to be. So that's what we can see here in verse 1. All right, in verse 2, David, uh, I will read the verse 2 again. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And a woman was very beautiful to look upon. So because David decided to stay rather to go forth the battle, there was a problem, or there is a problem happened, or a trouble. So we, we believe that if we are out of the will of God, we always have the trouble. We have the trouble if we're not doing our job, or not doing the things that we should be doing. Even at school, if we're not doing our job to teach, we're going to have a trouble. And everyone, I believe that you guys, or every one of us will do the, We'll do the same. All right. We have that extra time, free time, sitting around, decide and get bored. And, again, my, and this is going to make us in trouble. So if we'll make ourselves busy doing the right thing and fighting the battle in life, then we'll not fall into this kind of thing or temptation. So remember, the temptation will always come when we are out of God's will. There can be, uh, that's what we can see here in verse 2. And the Bible says in John 3, 19, remember that, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and the men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Men loved darkness. So King David's supposed to be in the battle and have a chance not to have this temptation in his life, but he had a wrong decision. So same to us. We always have the freedom to choose or to decide for our lives, but we cannot have, we never, we will never have the freedom to choose our own consequences. Same to us like Christian nowadays, we are doing things that are not right with God. What are we doing is we are feeding ourselves, our flesh, flesh desire. Instead of giving outside or going outside and share the gospel like what we're doing every Saturday. Every Monday, Monday to Friday, we're working hard. We're in the tr we, we are in the battle. And every Saturday and Sunday, we're supposed to be busy in doing God's will in our lives. Not only every Saturday and Sunday, I believe every day of our lives. So let us... Um, I, I quote this because I was teaching the grade 2 and the grade 1 students for their speech choir for the, present, for the recognition day. And it says there, when gadgets reign supreme in our lives. I, I just want to connect this because I believe these are, these are the, the reasons and these are the things that are being used by the devil right now. These are the gadgets or electronic devices or electronic, yeah, electronic devices. These are smartphones. What else? Uh, where's the teacher? <laughs> Laptops. MP3, MP4. Personal computer. These are <laughs> things that are 
reigning our lives nowadays. These are things that are reigning our lives nowadays. So what I'm saying is let us fight for this battle because fighting a godly battle keeps us out of trouble. So we are going to fight for this battle because like what I heard, uh, what Pastor quoted this morning, that because God will always take care for us. So that's all for Thank you and God bless.